So you know when you have systems or materials that are really working out for you and then something more new and shiny comes to the market but then you get like really hesitant to try it because this other thing has been working out really well for you? That's exactly how I feel about everything I'm going to share with you today. And hopefully, maybe, you'll find something that you can say, you know what? That is the solution to all of my problems. If only. <laughs> Let's get to it. First, to help you not feel overwhelmed, let me just clear up that all of these things that I'm sharing today are things that I have acquired little by little through the five plus years that I've been homeschooling. But I'm sharing them because Honestly, I love them and they just make my homeschool mama life so much easier. Product number one, the book stand. I love this book stand. This was from Amazon and I love it because it just, it's so sturdy. It's bamboo. It's pretty to have it on the table. If we are referencing a book to just copy and draw, or if we just want to have the book standing up because we are doing a unit study on the subject, it just stays there on the table or the area where we're homeschooling and it always looks so pretty. And let me see if I can. It folds up very tiny. So you can just do like that. Ow, sorry for the noise. And then this folds this way. And then you can keep it in a drawer nice and flat this whiteboard this is not just any whiteboard this is also a gridded sided whiteboard this one is from simply charlotte mason and i have tried other gridded sided whiteboards in the past but this one has been so much sturdy and it's been with us for i want to say almost five years now and as you can see, like you can see that it's a little stained, but it's still like in amazing condition. The reason I love this is because you don't only get the white side, but you also with this grid side, you can do math. You can practice your number position or your decimal positions, and it helps the children to keep their numbers straight and in place, especially when you're doing vertical math. And speaking of whiteboards, these are by far my favorite dry erase markers. These ones are by the U brands. I get them at Walmart. And the reason I love them is because one, they're double sided, so it's less things to store. And then you get this felt tip at the top of the lid, which means that when you are writing and you made a mistake or you have something to correct, you get that natural motion as when you have a pencil and then you can erase. So you're not having to look out for your big bulky eraser to erase or you're not trying to erase it with your finger. And with that, for example, if my student writes something in this board that she needs to erase and then she goes with this tiny one and erase it she doesn't erase anything else by mistake that she didn't mean to and that eliminates a lot of frustration because there is nothing that can derail a lesson than to have a kid doing an excellent job and then just getting so frustrated because they feel their job or their work or their effort has been ruined. And sticking to the topic of writing, um, these are my favorite tools for handwriting. There's a hair in my neck. Let's start with this one. This one is from Papermate and it's called a handwriting pencil, a mechanical pencil. They are a good size for little hands. And they also have that triangle shape grip that helps them with holding their pencil. It They come, I, I believe they come like seven in a pack of different colors and they are very nice colors. So they can pick and choose whatever color they feel like with writing. This these are actually like those dry erase friction type of pens. And I love this one for her handwriting books because I feel that whenever she knows that she's using a pen to practice her handwriting, she is less likely to rely on the fact that she can erase and correct. So, but still, it gives her the opportunity of erasing if she needs to erase something. This one came with our handwriting notebook and they're from the Good and the Beautiful. And they came like seven of them of different colors. This next thing I never thought I would rave about, but check out. 
Okay, so uh, I keep it up here because it's super heavy. My binding machine. It's so big, I know. Super big. But it's very good and it's very sturdy and it's been so good to us. So here's the thing. With, it is because of this that I am able to keep organized any curriculum that I purchase as a PDF and even create for my student workbooks. So this is just cardstock from the dollar store and then in here it's um, mixed media paper for as her art book or workbooks for different unit studies. And then I can choose if I want them landscape or vertical. One strategy I use to keep myself organized is I color coordinate the subjects. And one tool that I have found to be super helpful through the years is this plastic color envelopes from the U brand. They come about six in a pack and they are legal size. So here, I usually keep the printouts for the different things that we're going to be doing for the next weeks. And whenever I'm ready to use those printouts, I just pull the corresponding envelope that I need. And that way I'm not going through all my printouts to check out which one is that I need. I save a lot of time. They stay organized here. Notebooking. We do a lot of notebooking. By the way, if you don't know what notebooking is, or if you want to see how we do it, please let me know in the comments below. I will gladly make a video on that. Okay, so my three favorite tools for notebooking are simple. This notebook that has a space to paste something and then write. And with pasting, this is my favorite glue for notebooking. This is a What's it called? Oh, rubber cement. And this you can repaste actually. It gives that motion and feeling of a sticker. So you can put the paper and then if you feel that it didn't paste it exactly where you want it, you can always peel it out and restick it. As simple as that. With this, I would always recommend to get a glue rubber. This just lifts any excess of glue from rubber cement that is left on the page that maybe got a little out of the lines and then you can keep your notebook looking neat. One way we love to add colors to our notebooks is with watercolors. I let my student explore with different types of watercolors. This ones are more pearlescent and this ones are your typical Crayola watercolors. But as a former art teacher, I know the value of allowing your student to also explore with quality watercolors. That's why I always have on hand this little Koi brand watercolor um, case that you have your just regular colors. When my student uses this color, she can see the difference in the vibrancy of the colors and her in her work versus this one's. So whenever she's working on something very detailed or like a nature artwork, she will take her time to decide what colors she wants to show in her page. So her work turns out to be something that she is way more proud of showing because she used the good watercolors. Now, I would suggest that before you hand these watercolors to your student, let them know the value and the difference between this one's and this one's. But let me just say, it will happen naturally because once they see the difference of how the colors come out in the paper between this watercolors and this one's, they will care for their materials naturally. Now, watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is something that people get very confused about and sometimes when they go and purchase it is they just see that the prices are ridiculous. The brand I love and I feel is pretty affordable is this Canson brand watercolor paper. So I buy it like this or in the big notebook. This one came with 30 pages and it's this one we've been using for a while now and we still have a lot of paper here. This worked for wet on wet watercolor techniques or just dry watercolor technique. And yeah, they are super sturdy and really good quality. 
as our mixed media paper, I love this sketch diary from Walmart, from the brand Pen and Gear. I just buy the different sizes and maybe if we're going out on a nature walk, I just we just take the small one with our pocket watercolor things. If you don't mind it not having lines to write or journal, this ones are really good for notebooking. Sometimes I print images for my child so she can watercolor them and then add them to her notebooking pages. But watercolor paper is super thick and you should never run it through your printer. Don't ask me how I know that. Anyway, the cardstock that I have found that works beautifully with watercolor media is this one, Astro Bright cardstock. This next one might look so simple, but it helps with eliminate so much frustration when my child is practicing letter formation. So this is a blackboard from Handwriting Without Tears. I got this from the very beginning of our homeschool journey. And the reason I like this is because it has these two lines that they're not, they don't erase. So whenever my child needs to practice her letters, that has the lines that she needs to practice. Another thing I'm never going back on is open and go curriculum. That's right. I am one of those mamas who loves to organize her unit studies and her main lessons and find all the resources. I love reading teacher manuals. I love reading teacher guides, but there are some times and there are some seasons that I just don't have the time. So I rely on my open and go curriculum. It says, read the second half of Squanta's journey as well as the author's note, and then discuss with your student. And then they give you a prompt that of something that might come up in the discussion. And second, have your student narrate the events of Squanta's life and record it in your notebook. So it's simple, but it's a guide for the teacher that you don't really have to think how to progress lessons in order for them to make sense. So this is a type of open and go curriculum. This one is actually from Beautiful Feet Books. It's their early American history with a literature approach. The second type of open and go curriculum is one that has the whole script there for you, like the good and the beautiful math. So it tells you from at the very beginning of a lesson, you get a prompt of practice and then you jump into something like it says, read to the child and then you just straight up read that. And then again, it gives you the instructions for the game and that says, read to the child. And then little by little, the book gives the class for you. So you don't really have to prep anything. The exercise are there for you. The practice is there for your student. The script is there for you. So for you, it's all done and digested and you don't really have to do more. If you want to do more, you can. But if the seasons get hard and it's too much for you at the moment, you know you can rely on your open and go curriculum. So that is something that I decided that I will always have on hand. So this next one is just a fun one for me. I saw Jessica from the Waldock Way rave about these pens and I am so grateful that she shared them because now they're my favorite pens too. So the reason I love them is because one, they come in a variety of very pretty colors. The colors come out so bright in the page and they don't bleed and they're erasable. If you need to reschedule something, you can always count on the fact that you can erase it and you won't have a lot of cross off on your pages. Now, what I'm hoping you take away from this video is that with time, you will find your favorites as well or your favorites will find you. Trust the process, trust time, and don't rush to get it all. The first question you should always ask yourself is what is working for me and why? Try to understand and see why this material or supply is working for you and your student. And then rinse and repeat, just do it on purpose because the same goes for when something is not working. If you know and understand exactly why something is not working for you, you'll be less likely to make the same mistake twice.
and probably save yourself some money. Because remember this, new and shiny doesn't mean better. Don't strive from your purpose. Your homeschool goals are important. Keep following your heart's desire on what feels good and right for your family's unique learning and teaching style. Now, there is a tool that I feel is the main ingredient to my homeschool success, but this one you cannot buy at a store or Amazon. Sorry. You're going to have to cater it for yourself. And in this video, I share all about it. Make sure you don't miss next week's video by hitting that notification bell. If you really want to show me some appreciation, like, share, dun, taran, dun, 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 dun. like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Mm -hmm.